We're now Maison View. We're doing about 30 a month in just the space of two years operating. 30K. Yeah, yeah. So we, we just done 30 a month last month. Giving the best service, your name is going to spread. I haven't spent one penny on marketing. Yo, my people, welcome back to The Venture Room, the number one platform for aspiring entrepreneurs. And today we've got a guest that sold over £250 million worth of property through his virtual tour business. And I want to find out a bit more about the business model and also if it's a good one to get into. But first, I'll let him introduce himself. How you What's doing? What's happening, man? How's it going? You all right? Yeah, man. What's your name? What's the business? So my name's Leo Miranda. Um, uh, my business is called Maison View. Um, we launched roughly... I would say we launched up about four or five years ago. Um, but obviously, when I say launched, that was really sort of just me out in the field by myself for a couple of years. So in terms of fully operating to really build into where we have like 15 photographers now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, a whole team sort of handling my editing production team. That's Mad. enough. Like, yeah, I would say we've fully been operating for probably about two years now. Yeah, that's sick, man, because I actually saw you on that page that I follow called Numbers Game, and I thought, this guy's doing big things, man, because I think, was it two years ago? We said in COVID, didn't it? So Correct. short period of time, crazy numbers. How does it feel like you're getting a bit of exposure? Like, what do you, how does it feel, man? Do you know what? It's it's really good, man, and shout out to the Numbers Game. Like, obviously, they're one of the, like we just spoke about off camera, like, they're one of the biggest sort of platforms like yourself in this thing. So thank you for, obviously, hosting and documenting our journey um but yeah no nah, man it's really good bro do you know what it is it's like it's been so long like doing this and being tunnel vision that like i have to like speak about it because like behind the scenes and what's going on and what i'm seeing like the way the universe works and how it operates it's like like it needs to be broadcasted and like man. we're only on this planet once like it, you know what i mean you know tomorrow's not promised and yeah like, we just got to go out there. And of course, like, we as CEOs, um, you yourself with your company, like, yeah, you're the yeah. face of it. And True, yeah. The face and how we bleed what we do is, like, people need to see it. People need to see how we are, how we operate, how we articulate ourselves. And hopefully we can inspire young people, man, because it's a bit of a crazy world right now. Yeah. For obvious mad. reasons. And, yeah. you know, job job rates and you know income isn't the best and yeah it's mad it's just good to have i just feel it's good to speak and just good for young yeah. you know young people asian black white 100 percent, whatever ethnicity you are man you can do it bro because honestly yes yeah, that's so true but well, we'll get into your story in a second um thank you first and foremost for this is like your first podcast isn't it yeah man yeah, yeah hence the little little uh <laughs> <laughs> like yeah a little bit of uh, in my west but yeah man i'll get there i'll get there the yeah don't worry come. man we'll take it easy it'll be good um so first of all people don't know what the business is what is the business how does it work like if i've got no idea okay so good question so basically maze on view we are the people so if you wanted to sell your house you would obviously get on the blower to an estate agent mm -hmm. um they would then call um us if you like uh when they need all their media to document and to broadcast them to their portals to sell the house so they'll get on the blow to us um my booking team will then take the call mm. facilitate with them and then we'll liaise with our team yeah and then book them in and we'll send out photographers assessors yeah. and whatever service they might need and then we've got like a swift rapid turn around even the same day turn around let me get in there a bit of niche something <laughs> yeah. different that we had to do to you know what i mean obviously yeah good service give us that little edge over competitors which was unheard of and i think so people know like it's not normal photography it's like the 3d tours and stuff yeah so it, yeah so basically it's we are a company that do many different surfaces so for example we offer like our clients a whole list of packages um which is obviously very important in business to really have a simple menu if you like of what you can offer and a real just breakdown of what they can get for their you know for their money mm -hmm. and um compared to before we got in the game and what was a bit of a niche about us is that companies for example would have in-house photographers for all their estate photography so for example if you was a director of an estate agents you would have your team and then you'll have 
your sub team, which was your media team, and you'll have an in-house photographer or maybe on 40K. Mm. And that one photographer will then just work for you for a year, going out, shooting all your properties. Yeah. But obviously with COVID and with everything that's going on for infrastructures and institutions, it was a lot more cost effective to outsource. Yeah. And to have a company which rather than having, you know, three or four people on 40K a year, yeah. they could just outsource to us. Yeah. And uh, we'd be more cost effective and we can have, you know, a range of photographers all high end, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. better, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, probably then, cheaper than 40K. Che- yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. 100%. And obviously it's just rapid. Mm. Um, you know, they'll have photographers that if they're just, sh- if they're shooting like 30 or 40 properties for them in a month, that one photographer has to go through the editing themselves, has oh. to draw up the floor plans themselves. Yeah, yeah. Whereas we can just send our photographer, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and then just rapidly get that slick back service. Yeah, it? just slick service. So just taking it back, what made you start? What, did you have background in kind of estate agency, or what made you start it? Yeah, so um, basically, it wasn't one of them things where I was like a wizard and I just see some crazy niche <laughs> in the market and I just went for it. And yeah, no, unfortunately, I wasn't like that. But um, I had the um, I was lucky enough to actually be in the industry already. Okay. So what I've done is kind of saw what was happening and what mm. was coming in yeah. i.e companies sort of with covid outsourcing and um basically yeah and i i just adjusted and made a few tweaks because obviously we're not the only company there's like 241 companies like us in london already um that i'm competing with mm. um but um just to find a little stat to show what we're doing and where we're at it's like within a year compared to companies that have been around for 20 years we're like the 13th i was actually speaking to one of my account managers from Google the other day, we're like the 13th in the city out of 241 in, in one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, just like coming back to my point of just like being in there, but seeing, making a few tweaks and adjustments to see how we can capitalize and make what yeah. is already out there better. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, just, yeah. and at the end of the day, obviously having really, really good product, i.e. our photos. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, I think because I remember in COVID that there was like a little hype with the free, you know, the three D photography. I don't know what the company's called, but um, everyone was kind of looking at it and thought, oh, they didn't really know how to execute it. So how did you manage to put that together and build a team? So one of the things that was quite niche about us is, firstly, you're right. So um, obviously, COVID was a bad time, as you're aware, for a lot of businesses yeah. and society in general. Um, a really, really hard time for a lot of people, but on the flip side of that, we was one of the companies within the industry that actually benefited from it because um, obviously if you wanted to buy a property in COVID, um, it wasn't as easy as just like the normal norm of going to a property yeah. with an estate agent and seeing it. That just didn't happen. So having virtual tours enabled estate agents to just sort of rapidly send that to clients overseas or, um, you know, without having to view the property. So yeah. our bookings just went and the way that obviously other companies it's not like we just come in and we were just like boom we're, we're new we're, we're this is a new thing virtual tours like it was heard of it was known yeah but the way i was able to adapt to that is again coming back to the packages so with with us and maison view you can now book photography virtual tour floor plan all in one so we can get that done all in one hour in an hour we can get that done all in one hour and get all of those all of their media out like packages done in one thing Mm -hmm. whereas others would obviously just be like we can get you a virtual tour done all right we might have to come back tomorrow to do photos because we've got no one available to do that yeah but my team are all like trained and specialized in every single service that we can offer so we so in a way are grouped all the different services in one and offered that as a package yeah yeah. almost like getting a burger chips and drink rather than just a (laughs) burger yeah. Whereas before it was just a burger, what companies could offer. But that's what people want, isn't it? Convenience. So like, I always talk about Amazon. Yeah, exactly. there were so many online retailers that were about eBay and all the other smaller ones. But the convenience and ease of use of Amazon made sure that they dominated the market now, just oh, making it more convenient. And it sounds like that's what you did by offering one service, one package, that's quick turnaround, high Definitely. quality, be able to beat everyone else in the market. Therefore, therefore, like, <laughs> like, like, as you know, like everything is so rapid nowadays, like. Um, 
I don't know if I'm making a connection here, but even me on Instagram now, like I can't really watch anything longer than 15 to 20 seconds. Oh, like, yeah, I, like yeah. it has to catch my like you yeah. have like some it just I don't know. The only things that I watch is something that just catches me from the get go. When yeah, I watch yeah. it, it has to be something interesting. I think. Yeah. So the connection I'm kind of making to your point is like, yeah, we we adapted to the times of where we were just fast and ruthless with it. Like we can literally we've we've had like jobs like. 19 million pound penthouses in Mayfair where we've had like landlords in Italy like look we, I want my property marketed today I want to like I, I need this live today yeah. but they've instructed the client on that day yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. they've called them say look yeah. can you do this for me I want to market my property but I want it out today yeah and obviously that was kind of really hard mm. for estate agents to push that but now they've got a service in Maison View where we can come to your property before 2 p.m. for same day bookings. So we can come to your property before 2 p.m. as long as it's them. And we can get have everything, all the media outlet to you, edited, done by Sick. 4 p.m. the same day back to you. I love it, man. So again, that was a bit unheard of. Yeah. Um, the traditional way, like you said, like what companies would have with their in-house photographers is they probably wouldn't get them photos back. And that's just the photos, let alone the floor plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the other services yeah. for another week or 10 days. So I've had a lot of clients where I've gone in and spoken to them and said, look, I'm, you know, where Mason View, this is what we offer. Just out of interest, I wonder, you know, what your turnaround is. And when you get your photo back, they'll be like, oh yeah, 10 days. Like, it's really rapid. I'll be like, mate, like, I'm, <laughs> mate, I can get these photos back to you like today. Yeah, that's why you're winning, man. Yeah. yeah All right. Yeah. So I want to take it back before the business, yeah? I want to find out a bit more about your background. Sure. So what was life like before the business? Like, what was your first job? Let's hear that story. Cool. So um, a bit about me um, on my social, like family side, um, basically my name like Leo Miranda. Um, so my dad's from Goa, which I'm not sure if you're aware of. It's like a state in India. Okay. Um, it's a Catholic state, which is like um, colonized by the Portuguese, hence the Portuguese name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a bit like the Ivory Coast and the French. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and so I'm mixed heritage and my mom's British. So I, I was grew up in a sort of working class slash middle class background yeah, yeah, between yeah. both my mum and dad. We separated when they was quite young. Um and well, thank oh, who you separated you? My mum and dad. So okay, yeah, yeah, when I was quite young. So I kind of lived both lives of like my dad sort of in Upton Park, Newham, quite yeah. working class, yeah. Newly to this country. Yeah. Um whereas and then with my mum, um sort of more sort of inner city, Bow, Tower Hamlets. Okay. Um, and what, what I think growing up with that heritage kind of helped me like broaden my skills upon different cultures and understanding different cause, um, my mom had like, you know, so many sort of working professionals and people around her, um, which I learned from. Um, so I was actually, so my mom was actually a teaching, um, she was like a consultant for schools around the borough. So she would go around and basically children with special needs, she would go and facilitate with schools and head teachers and say, right, this kid is starting the school. They're going to need a lift here because they've got a wheelchair. They're going to need these, yeah, yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. Um, and the point I'm making is like my mum was quite known well within teachers and okay. high institution schools. So she got all me and my friends TA jobs. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had really good relationships with head teachers all across the bar and we like all like me and a couple of my friends all became like TAs through her. And, oh, that's sick. So, um, I bet you couldn't get away with anything at school though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But so, yeah, so I started off actually like working as a teaching assistant, um, working with a lot well, of young people. This was college times, yeah? Um, this was, yeah, so I, um, this was college times just after secondary school. Then I went to university and I studied film and media studies. So you were um, interested in that anyway? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I've always had a passion in film and um, photography, um, editing as well is my thing. And um, so I went to UEO, which is just around the corner from here. Okay. Um, I wasn't really one that saw uni as like a party sort of time of my life and fun thing. I was just there. I think because it was UEO and it was on my doorstep, literally a couple yeah, of stops yeah, from yeah, my yeah, house. Yeah. Like it was just go there, bosh, yeah. get 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 the get the learning done and but leave. i feel like london unis are like that like, yeah because i went to coventry in it which is away from london so it's like nice. a different place everyone's on party and for the first year yeah 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 <laughs> but yeah. in london it's not it's because you live here it's like it's not nothing new yeah right? yeah exactly it's yeah. like you know what to expect so um so the point i'm getting to is like through film and studies i'm always like passionate about that and then i actually then 
um, had um, with my student loan money, I actually bought a Canon 5D Mark II, which is the bad boy camera at the yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of videographers, everyone will know about that. And the Mark II was like a game changer in the game. Um, and I used some of my savings to buy that. And I just went out and started shooting music videos and is started it? becoming runners. And well, yeah, they're like um, SBTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to that. Like SBTV was like huge inspiration yeah, with what yeah, they're 100%. doing. Like I was always like like wanting to be something like that. But yeah. at the same time, being a realist, like it was always going to take like yourself. You know, it was always going to take, take a lot of heavy graft. And mm -hmm. I did want to get to that level, but. I kind of came to the conclusion through doing like, I don't know, if you, like, you know, roll deep. Yeah, I thought, yeah. oh, no, nah, bro. Like, I was saying like, roll deep, like, it's mad. <laughs> roll deep. like. I remember like, roll deep. Yeah, I man. said, remember roll deep. No, like, obviously they're not old, old, but yeah, I thought like, I was doing a lot of shooting for them. Oh, is it? Um, nice. I was like doing some touring stuff with Tiny Tempo, which is interesting. And, so uh, you're inspiring. connecting with people then? Yeah, like literally just going out, done a, done a few bits of GRM, Graham, so Graham like Daily at the quite, time. Um, a good networker, like... Do you know what? That's, How did you meet these people? I I just went for it, bro. Like, and for me as well, money at the time, I always was a person that understood like it was always about like networking and not really chasing the money. So the rates, if I was to tell you what I was pe charging clients for doing sick proper videos, bro, was like mad, like a mad thing. Like you'd think like, why are you even like doing that? But obviously the bigger vision was to get, try and become, yeah, you know, like a real serious bad boy director in the game. Um, but in all honesty, bro, what I realized about like, like that kind of industry and that side of things, it's just mad cutthroat. Like it is mad cutthroat and it is very like a lot of companies would promise you so many things. Um, like for example, obviously I'm not going to say things or name labels, but you know, like I was told things like, oh, come out to IB for and shoot this video for us, everything paid for, which way it was. But, you know, can you do it for this crazy price, which was unheard of, but I still would accept it on the base of factors that they'll be like, you know, we, we've got a videography role. When you come back, if everything's good, we employ you. Oh, yeah. Which, of course... They're selling you the dream, basically. Selling you a dream. <laughs> yeah. You go out there, film everything, be like going ham on the editing, like wanting to prove yourself to only just like then see another next music video be done on the same label with another young person that they've found in Devon or whatnot, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just using them and like, and even still to this day, like, cause I do dabble like with just yeah. things like, like it's a passion of my music. Like I think being from East London myself and yeah, 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 the, the yeah. UK hip hop scene and rap scene, yeah, it's quite close to my heart. And yeah, a lot of times I've even dabble it now and I see it bro, like I see labels and the way they promise the world to young people and use them. And furthermore, I just come to the conclusion as well. It wasn't really paying the bills. It was very, cutthroat yeah, and here and now like music videos won't every day in your diary until you get to that level yeah 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 of you know like some of the bad boys in the game now yeah then cool but yeah then when you're freelance and you're really trying to get in it so at the time um my ex she was an administrator for one for one of the big sharks in the real estate industry okay again i'm not going to mention names because we'll come to that a bit later but yeah, yeah, yeah. i had a bit of passer with them a bit later on <laughs> um but so this big um, company that she worked for, there was a job well going and it was property photography. And how old are you now? So I'll, so this is post uni, done a couple of years trying to find myself on that identity <laughs> crisis one. We all do that. Do, um, doing all this museo thing, trying to be the next media video director, coming to these conclusions of what I'm seeing of it being yeah, cut yeah, from. Yeah. So then I'm like, do you know what? Like, I just need, I'm still behind the camera in it. It's property. It's not really what I want to do. It can be a bit like mentally draining, just going into houses, doing the same. Like it's not really fulfilling my creativity. Mm -hmm. But I need like a salary now in it, yeah, and yeah, I can't yeah. deal with yeah. this freelance life. Yeah. So yeah. So luckily, I got into that big company. Um, just to break it down, I won't say what company it is, but it's out of Foxton's, Dexter's. What's another big boy? Hampton. So let's say it's one of them three, just to give you the levels of how, okay, yeah, how yeah, big yeah. this company is. Yeah. And basically, yeah, um, yeah, I um, went for the interview for that and fortunately got it. Um, so I was working within that company. I learned all the tricks of the trade and you can see where I'm coming to now um, through that company of editing. And obviously they had their own, you know, whole training, two months of training on how to edit property pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how how to shoot property, the settings to use, how to draw RICS guidelines, floor plans. But I just want to pause there because that is something that I've heard from a lot of guests where... Mm. 
people think, oh, we leave uni and start a business straight away. But that's not always the best way to do it. So something like you, you've gone to a company that's doing on a big scale and you're learning on their dollar. They're paying you to learn. Exactly. Which you can then exactly. use in the future. But the maddest thing is, subliminally, I don't even realise, like, I, I've got no idea of setting up my own company now. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, like, I hear you, like, yeah. that, that, like in... in in a sort of story movie kind of way that would have been sick if I kind of knew what I was doing. Yeah. But in all honesty, no ego or nothing. Like I, I was just looking for a role and I had no idea of where I was, what was going to happen or what I was going to create till now. Um, but yeah, so I kind of did learn the inside info mm. on how property photography and property marketing works. And I worked for them for like two years. Okay. And then what happened from there is basically it was just some like, it was just a madness. Like I literally had to walk out at the end of like literally. Wait, what walk, happened that you can't talk like, about? Like, well, I can say like, it was mad, bro. Like I was basically, cause I was on foot at the time. I didn't have a car. So what happened is I was basically carrying all this heavy gear, like camera, flash, tripod, like, which is heavy, bro, on foot. And uh, yeah. they made you wear a suit. Is it? So you had to wear a suit in it. Cause obviously you're like the, the just to um, confirm. So like the property photographers are the first people that a client sees okay. or an estate agent's client sees. So they might have the phone call, hi, we want to sell a property, but obviously then the first person they see is a photographer. So you're like the image of that estate agent. Do you know what I mean? They might see you before they even see the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the sales manager who they've been speaking to on the phone. Yeah. So obviously I understood why you had to wear a suit and this image and thing, but imagine wearing a suit going from Archway, Camden, all the way down to Croydon, then to do a shoot all the way. <laughs> Like in like on foot, bro, traveling on trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I know the pain because I've carried the podcast stuff around, didn't it? All the cameras and that. There you go. It's hard work, man. There You're you sweating, go. sweating, like in a yeah, suit, bro. Long, like imagine, long. like yeah, so like going literally north, east, south, west, and sea every day, doing about five jobs a day. Um, and on top of that, then what they've done is they made every day. I had to go back to their office in Shepherd's Bush, but I lived in the east. And no matter where my last That's job was, yeah. so if my last job was in Canary Wharf, yeah. I would have had to still, have, after being in Croydon or wherever it is in London, I would have still had to have gone back Man. all the way to Shepherd's Bush to then edit the photos, yeah. to then come back all the way to East London to go home. So when I get home, bro, I'm just like... You're done. Done yeah. that, bro. Yeah. Like, and like my feet are hurting. Like, you know, honestly, like, I still have problems with my feet now. Is it? Yeah, because of all the walking. Like, I used to like track my thing and I was doing like something like 15 miles a day walking, bro. <laughs> Like for years, bro, and, and it's not like you were getting paid the money to. But it was peanuts. Like don't yeah. like it was about. In all honesty, like it was. I was getting about one six before tax. Oh man, and that's not a lot of money, bro. But like, don't get me wrong. Like that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money to some people. Like that's that's a wage, isn't it? To mm. some people, but in my world and yeah. the way I see the world and knowing who I am and what I've got in myself and my creativity, yeah. Like, that's not a lot of money. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I know yeah. I'm worth more than that, innit? So, at that point, did you realise, hold on, I think I'm worth more than this? Like, I've got potential, or was that later? So, basically, from there, yeah. So, obviously, all of that just completely, like, because I'm just generally a nice guy, innit? And, like, I kind of just, like, keep, like, just keep smiling and get on with it. And at the end of the day, these people are paying my wage and I didn't have any other opportunity, in it. Like, it was my salary I had, you know, things that I was dependent on with that salary that I needed. So I just accepted it and cracked on, bro. But then after like two years of that, all of doing all of that, um, and by the way, there were other photographers as well doing the same, which were all, all like mentally drained, yeah, but they yeah, just yeah. obviously had to yeah. crack on mortgages, whatever people just cracked on. But yeah. I was just like, I can't do this, bro. Like I'm more than this. So I, I literally just walked out one day. Like there was one day where it was a mad thing. Like I said, I think I was in, um all the way up in uh, like Holston. um and i think yeah i was then they sent me to like all the way down like west south anyway just missions and i was like nah do you know what i can't do this anymore I cracked yeah and it was just one of them ones where it was like a build up inside of me and where i haven't yeah. let it out it yeah. just i just cracked and i just walked out and i then um basically started working for another company which was a bit like what i'm doing now um but they were like been in the game 20 years and um not like to the extent of what i'm doing now but quite old school like just done just general services okay, yeah 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 um and then yeah so i started working for that company um and yeah bro i had a bit of a madness with them as well 
um, so and this is all coming there? this is all coming to where made some few and how it come about but so I've left that company all like shit I ain't got a job now sorry if I can't swear um, I, can't, I ain't got a job now I need a salary like looked on the found this company started working for them and then they were actually um, basically they took me on and I became like the head photographer inside like the first month or something because they just love my work like like obviously from me being a creative and my style yeah, 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 yeah. like I was a good photographer in it and obviously I learned through Dexas and I had all of that under me which they knew so they yeah. was like oh he's a bit of a heavyweight yeah whereas other people they were using were probably self-trained and yeah, come yeah, from yeah, different yeah. skill yeah. a completely different industry so they just straight away loved my loved me put me up there and then I was doing a lot of their work and then basically it got to a point where I was promised because my wage again wasn't the highest but the person that ran that company basically had a plug in Canada, Toronto, and they were going to open a sub, a sister company there. Okay. And I was promised that if I was to continue at the rage I was on, which was something, again, not the highest, like 25K, but for what I was doing, about five jobs a day, um, all the editing, everything, like it was unheard of in it. But I was young, so they kind of oh, obviously. It was low. Yeah, it was a low, like yeah. they were just like, playing on yeah, like yeah, they yeah. were like wow we've got a bit of a heavyweight here he's a sick photographer like he's a nice guy we're just gonna make the most out of him and just <laughs> yeah. like f like literally just get as much as we can out do, of it do you know what a lot of companies do that and they think that they're getting one over you but mm. someone's gonna either offer you that money or you're gonna do it yourself you're gonna realize your value so there's That's no it. point undercutting your staff you might as well pay them what they're worth and they'll stay with you a hundred a hundred mm. definitely man and like so yeah, so basically I was, um, it kind of turned into the same situation I was in. So then I, because I was like the main photographer, they used to use me for all of their shoots. So rather than just being based in East, yeah, yeah. I started end up being everywhere and I still weren't driving at this time. So again, gear all over me. So I was just in the same position. And then the only thing that kept me going with them is basically I was offered a plate. He, the promise was that I was going to get placed in Toronto. And he said that from the get go, like when I started this company, like if you're good, I've got this guy on in Toronto, I can base you in Toronto, paid hotels, everything. Yeah. And I was like, obviously, as a young person, that sounds like, all right, do you know what? Man might just switch it up and live in Toronto. Like that sounds good, like obviously. And then, so I'm like, cool, do you know what? I'm going to graph it up. I trust, like, we had a gentleman's agreement. And then closer, close, like as much as then they started rapidly growing, bro. Like wow. they started getting like the megalodons mm -hmm. and the big great white sharks in the sea. And then, then their, my job started turning another, then the team started getting bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, everyone started getting from three jobs a day to about 15 jobs a day. But surely you would climb up. Yeah. It grows. But I, there was no, no, I wasn't climbing up. I was just always promised this Canada thing. So again, just being a bit of a nice guy, and I have to take this L. Like you can't always be a nice guy, but it's just the reality of it, where it was, and they was like manipulating me to the point of like just fueling and getting the most out of me on this promise. And then he got to a point where this is the company director, where his company now is like a just to give you an insight of stats, it's like a 500k turnover monthly wow. company. Boy. So they've rapidly grown. This, Today, this yeah. Uh, today they're probably mills now because they're big. They're one of my main like main ops. They're one of my main <laughs> bears, but they're big. Like, but obviously he started yeah, like he started yeah, a long yeah, time yeah. ago. So, but yeah, so they're 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 massive now. And like he, I'm noticing my relationship with him is a bit more distant. Like okay. he. Him as a director, his ego's getting a bit like I'm, you know, what I mean, yeah, he's getting yeah, a bit yeah, more yeah. flashy with it. Like yeah. it's all getting a bit to his head. Yeah, and then. Next thing I know is I've got a call from the director of the company who I've never ever had a relationship with, like with like work relationship with, um, like only just emails and just talk to her. And I've known of this person as a director and obviously always offered them my respect because they were yeah. above me and like always respected them, but never really had any sort of conversations or like might have met her a couple of times or whatever at like work parties and stuff. But then she reached out to me and said, Oh, by the way, like my man. He, like he's basically you like his brother's gone to toronto in it like he oh, that was all so you were, that was all a gas basically oh, from the get-go like that was so and how many years had you put into the company already about about two two oh, years man. on foot doing all of this traveling around like yeah, down to yeah, holston yeah, yeah. that nines area and that bro with like five grand equipment on my back <laughs> yeah. like like meat and alliance den bro like walking <laughs> around like goon like stress bro like like do you know what i mean like mm. going through all of that just for like 
growing his company when really I should have been like what I was doing I should have been at least offered shares of or something yeah, man. so this direct to the thing and I'm like and one thing about this girl as well is like because I got on whatsapp her like she's always promoting church and mm -hmm. she's a big church girl she just, and in fact I even just come to think of it when I was working with them she asked she commissioned me to do like a, some a photo shoot for okay. a church event she put on yeah, and I yeah. went to that which is all the way in west in near um Elan. And yeah, she had a good energy and like, I kind of, I liked her and I liked what she was doing, obviously with church and everything. And so she reached out to me, told me that I'm like, I was like, wow, like I respect, thank you for telling me like yeah. what a pagan. Yeah. And she was like, however, like I've got this new, cause he snaked me too, where apparently she had something going on with him with Dubai. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. she snaked him. And he snaked her, sorry. So, so that's just the company culture. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he snaked her now and he's used her again as a director to build wow. the company. And now he's, mm -hmm. so he's basically this pattern of what he was doing, he was doing, which in a way in business, it happens, isn't it? It's not, mm. it's not unheard of. Like he's just putting himself first and the business first. And he's used people that's got skill sets to get him to where he wanted to be, which is a 700 and 500k to 750k a month company. Um, and fair play to him, isn't it? I understand that side of it, but. I'm just a human person, innit? And regardless of business, so like I always believe still, like you have to, like there is, you know, just be your, like, you know what I mean? Like just move, like, move with your heart, innit? Like still have some sense of understanding of people's lives. And so anyway, I'm not going to go too deep into it. She reached out to me and told me basically, look, I've, I'm now launching my own company. How do you, I've, I'm actually taken a few of his clients that he's unheard of and I've already spoken to them. How do you feel about joining me? Obviously, in the back of my head, I was like, but that's just could be the same. But then yeah. she's like, but I can give you shares now. Wow. So you okay. can, like, obviously, now you know he snakes you. Yeah. Come and join me. Between me and you, I've already taken a few of these clients. Conversations already be had. Yeah. yeah she yeah. sent me emails of, like, showing me, like, forwarded me emails where they've, I've seen her speaking to them saying, okay, yeah, cool. Um, so she's created her own company from her understanding of obviously being in the game and understanding, like, how it works. Um, and then she's like, I'll give you 25% shares um, as a bit, and you can be a shareholder, you mm -hmm. can train staff and you can be a part, like actually be someone that's yeah, yeah, yeah. on the board of the company. Yeah. So I'm like, boom, like I've got, right, obviously I'm going to come away from my man because he's just snaked me. But at the same time, I'm, I need a salary. Do you know what I mean? What am I going to do? So like. I didn't like what's the worst that can happen in it let me just take this could be like one of them universe moments where karma in it and it's happened to be yeah 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 yeah. so I decided to work with her and it was mad like and coming to think about it because like we was actually still working for him and then we was on the side doing our <laughs> own thing mad. so like we would she had some of his clients yeah and then like we'd done a job and then he didn't even know and then we would like pattern everything so obviously it was completely our own but there was one time we'd done a job in the early stages of us starting our own and yeah. in her email signature we forgot to change the address because she had the same address as his so i remember sending the and then the client wrote back and said oh you got the same address as the other company and we're like so he's like Whoa. so we just said he was upstairs <laughs> like yeah we're in the same site but we were just in the room upstairs like oh my dear. so things like that so it was, it was funny and it was interesting and it was like it was a bit movie like to be honest and then yeah so we started doing that and eventually he found out uh, um, again there were so many things that happened from when he found out yeah but i won't yeah. go too much into detail because i know we've got a time limit he found out um and then we started doing our own thing and then we actually become quite successful next thing you know like i'm seeing bear well, job, you and the, the you woman. and the girl yeah, yeah like all of a sudden bear job started popping up in my That's... diary she had she started getting some Big clients, like for example, the Olympic Village. There's a company called um, Here East, okay, which they own and run. Well, they don't own it, but they're a company that run all of the developments and um, the sales and lettings for every every apartment on E20. Uh -huh. And she managed to get them. Wow! So, I mean, you're getting paid properly now. Still the same thing, but obviously, in my head, I'm thinking like I've got shares now, and if I just continue and rapidly build this company. And if we get to a okay. similar extent of where yeah, we yeah. could be like a 300k, 500k turnover company, yeah, yeah. then I've got shares in this company. This is a whole different ball game. So regardless of where I get, like, we're getting somewhere. Okay. So then working, working with her. And then next thing you know, basically it got to the point where we was really built. And then I started training photographers that I, she asked me, she said like, now can you like manage 
photographers and start like we're getting big we're going to need the bigger team so i started going on indeed looking at photographers going through the applications mm -hmm. meeting them going to coffee yeah. shops doing trial shoots with them shadowing them and then i got about three or four photographers um on board that were amazing and then once that happened a couple of weeks after that the rhythm's gone we continue next thing you know i'm not getting no response from her now oh no and then all of a sudden i'm blocked Woo. and then all of a sudden i'm going onto hmrc on the government website and my shares are gone <gasps> no so basically i've just created you didn't fall out with her yeah bro like basically no nah, like 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 because everything she just she just she just went ghost so she, so again from the get-go and basically it comes to like, like i realized now that whole toronto thing must was a lie yeah so she just made up this whole plan so she's probably sitting there in the office seeing what this company's doing do you know what i've learned how this company works let me now create she's thing and how Leo's done what he's done with my man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just do the same. Flip, man. So then she's got to a point now where that's running and operating, and then obviously I've trained and she was she so she must have strategically planned it to the point of where. Wow. Let me get it to a point of where I've got a team and then boom, and it's actually illegal to take someone's shares, isn't it? Uh, so it's. It's mad how so she does. Like got, she could, got. she's. It's, it's actually illegal to do. It. Like you can't just take someone's shares nah. like that, regardless if they got ten percent, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I've got actually a whole case pending at the moment wow. with my lawyers. So it happened twice, basically. Happened twice, bro. Happened twice, and I was like, I was can't. Yeah, they like, they used me to build the companies because they they knew this guy was just like a, a workhorse and yeah, creative yeah. and yeah. just like just wanted the best for everyone in it. I was just like. Like if you had good energy, like, and you know, and we can like connect, then I want the best for you, regardless of what role you're in and how high you are to me. Like, but that's I want to help, bro. That's a mad story. But um, I was gonna say, like, when you're younger, you always taught to be nice and like giving and generous to everybody. But as you get older, you have to protect yourself because some people will just take all of that out of you and drain you, so you got nothing left. And imagine as well if you actually pre it on a bigger picture complex. Like, imagine that like, she basically took someone out of their full-time employment like luckily i didn't have a mortgage i ain't got no kids or yeah. anything but imagine if i had a mortgage and like like obviously it messed me up like i still like so she took me out of a full-time role yeah yeah and then just just let me go right. um, but there's so many people out there that will just mess you over man yeah you just gotta protect yourself from that it's true it's true and um so yeah and obviously the whole church thing spun me and it's like how can you like I'm not saying there's a connection there. Like, yeah. I'm, obviously, you can, like, business is business, business ruthless. Like, yeah, you can yeah. still be ruthless in business and still yeah. be someone dedicated to church and still have a good heart. But come on, like, that, that's, like, now you're, like, that, that, mad. is that, that don't really make, like, you've just taken someone fully out of their work, yeah. used them, and just literally flung them. So now I'm, I'm, I've got nothing, bro. Like, I've just built this girl, like, and she's flying. That's like, still going on, and I've got nothing. I'm so you've like, left the company now. I didn't even leave. Like I've just, I've got like she's just kicked just, you out. Just kicked, <laughs> yeah, without no convo, nothing. Shares just gone. Like so, this must have been the hardest me. point of your life, man. Like, hardest, bro. Hardest, bro. Like pain. Like obviously, I went into a bit of depression. Then were you at home? Or you had yeah, to... yeah. I was living with my dad at the time. Like depressed. Like my dad saw all of it. Like affected. Like my dad. Like he would like like my mum is like the most softest gentle person in this world and i even had my mum in front of me saying like, like, like i want to shoot her like, <laughs> like, like imagine your mum say like so imagine me like imagine you seeing your mum yeah who you know is the most gentle person mm. in the world to yeah. say something that like, shows you to the extent of what this situation is mm. for your mum to come really want to shoot someone <laughs> wow because she's seeing what her son's gone through so now maison view so in a in like and this is again like hopefully like this is encouraging for any young person or entrepreneurs or anyone that's been through some pain and like in a nutshell bro i just turned my plane into a positive and it was just like i used all her like nah like nah you're not gonna get away with like you're not gonna and obviously i preed it on a reality one is like wait hold on they could have used anyone and still done like they could have used like why why did they use me like why was I unique? Why did she create this plan with her? So like, so obviously I've got something, so. bro. That's that's key though. That thing you just said there because 
it's all about how you see the world, isn't it? What lens you use to see. So you were at the bottom point. You could have easily bottom. kept on going on that plane. Smack down, rock bottom. But you decided to flip it on its head and think, hold on, I've got yeah. value here. They've used me for a reason. Yeah. Let me do something with that. Yeah. Yeah. So the exactly. mindset kicked in. Exactly. And so I started like pre and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get depressed here. I'm not going to like let this get me down, which you could have easily done. Like any, any, any human being that could yeah. have really knocked back mm. down and, you know, knocked a few years off your life of depression and, you know, gone into a bit of a hole. But I just turned it into my positive and I used the fuel, used the fire as fuel, bro. And so I was just like, boom, company name. I've got a whole bank of my images. Like, let me like put together a nice clean website. Um, what can I do different? Boom, same day turnarounds, which they never was doing. Also, one thing that was kind of my benefit as well is they was like West London based. Okay. And I was East London. So obviously, like they did cover East London. They covered like, they covered like me. They covered the whole of London. But like, obviously, I'm East London's my doorstep. So let me just go ham in mm. the East and yeah. just kill that market. Yeah, yeah, Um, Because that's my advantage. And yeah. Basically, yeah, like I, I created Maison View, um, created like, and then um, just went for it myself to the point of where. Did you have I, some money saved? Or you just. Um, I had expensive. some savings and I had my gear. I was using the same gear, which is a Sony A7R2, which is, um, which yeah. is a good camera. I like it's, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. So it's got, it, it. it's one of those cameras that's been out for a while, but it's got longevity, yeah, yeah. like it's still clean to this yeah. day and you can get away with using it regardless of what's Sony cameras are good, man. Sony's are good. So my gear was still good. But what I've done is I, instead of like, which was um, kind of the more general for property photographers, which was like, I don't know, you know, um, just a company, Leo Miranda, like the company wasn't Leo Miranda. It wasn't an in individual company. It wasn't Leo Miranda Photography. Yeah. I created Maison View where it came across as a company. Brand, yeah. As a brand. Yeah. So I was hitting up from there. I was learned The one good thing, which is mad about, the person, the girl that I did use is like, I learned all of the inside information from her when I okay. did work with her. Yeah. So I learned all about the pricing. Yeah. I learned about how she liaises with clients. Um, I learned about, yeah. So that was one thing. So I used that. So everything I got from her, mm -hmm. I used to my advantage to the point of where now Maison View, we're doing about 30 a month in just the space of two years operating. 30K. Yeah, yeah. So we, we just done 30 a month last month. And I think what's what's good about you, because I checked out your site, is your window looks so professional. Like your Thank branding you, is on point. Thank whereas you. Whereas people just neglect that side of it. But your front window is super... I don't know if it was always like that. Um, we, We've just had a bit of a rebrand recently. Okay. But yeah, but we've always had... Yeah. Even the website before was similar to what so it's So it feels the clients clean, and confidence yeah. to think, okay, these people... It's a premium service they're offering. Yeah, yeah. So I, th I think like one of the good things about being a photographer is having a good eye. Yeah. yeah. And that helps. So any like photographers or, yeah. you know, aspiring people that have got business ideas and you've already got the eye. Yeah. You know what I mean? It don't just look at it and you've got the eye for photography. If yeah. you've got the eye, you've got the eye for what looks, websites look good, what place, how to place pictures, how to, where text can yeah, yeah, still yeah. be just left center or just a yeah. bit off center just to give it that bit of quirkiness. Like not everyone has that. So I use that eye to really, you know, master my brand and feel. And um, so, yeah, I just started when ham and like in the first month, bro, we went like with Maison View, like I, I, it was just me myself, but I came across a brand. So I would have like, I'll be going to jobs as well as like dealing with emails. So I'll be <laughs> in a shoot doing photos, yeah, yeah, yeah. packed out 10 jobs a day. Wow. People thinking there's different photographers. It's just me, bro, going around. <laughs> And I said, like, we went VAT when I realized, okay, I'm on the sign. We went VAT registered in the first month. Ooh. So for people that don't know that might um, not be into business or understand, like, you have to clear 80K or above to yeah, be VAT yeah, yeah. registered. Yeah. So so we've done that in the first month. Wow. With one photographer. That's mad. And um, how did you get the clients? So I was going in as a director, like, just dressed, you know, well, putting a nice outfit, the... pulling up. Um, getting brochures made, emails, like loads of emails, obviously sending about 800 emails a day, for six, like about 750, 60 of them yeah. decline, no yeah. no response. But then that, two, you know, 30 that might come in, one yeah. of them might, you know, and you've got to remember with estate agents, like, like one client can do about 100 to 200, have 200 properties per month. So, 
even though you're only getting yeah, yeah, yeah. 15 or 10 emails back yeah uh, you know what i mean there's a lot of volume within you know you never know how big one estate agents can be and of course one thing the reason why we do i was fortunate to get vat registered and the reason why that happened because it does sound a bit surreal that like how can you make 80k in your first month of business but one thing again coming back to the branding and i felt i got one of the megalodons i say megalodons because they're not even a great while like i've got i'm not going to name them because i've got competitors and they may try and watch this <laughs> and try, 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 try to take them but I've got one of the megalodons in the scene in like what, my first clients? month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So just but you can't mention them. No. Um, okay. So and yeah. So that that and but how did you I get got them? them in, you just called them. And... Just an e yeah. So I just emailed them. Hi, we are Mason View. Check out our portfolio. Boom, boom, boom. Right. This is what we do. And then they was like, yeah. And then one thing that I'd done, um, which was quite niche, is I would offer like a trial shoot. So I'll say like boom like we'll do a trial shoot for you yeah because yeah. obviously it's very hard like yeah getting in there with like it's like but imagine you're a but like a burger supplier yeah and you've just built a business and you've got you've got everything on smash like you've got your warehouses you've got your meat uh supplier you've got your packaging um you've got it but it's that's one thing but yeah. then to get a, a contract with burger king you've got to remember burger king's had this relationship they've that you know with whoever they're using now for mm -hmm. 30 50 years on so same with estate agents like trying to get an estate agent when yeah. they've got a relationship already yeah and um obviously it's hard it's serious decisions for them because they're they're sacrificing people that you know wages possibly so to actually get in there and get a client mm. and for them to solely rely on you for their media it's hard it's hard um so used to use strategic things like we'll offer you a trial shoot yeah and then what I'll do is I'll go into a trial shoot and one of the main things, um, and I think this is quite a key thing about Maison View is, so I don't know if you've like renting or ever searched yeah, or bought, yeah. looking for a house. If you go on right move, obviously, if you're just going through bundles and bundles of properties until you find place one, it's just always wide angle shots in the corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it can be quite mental, like just the same thing. Yeah. But one thing what I've done and what we do is we introduce like lifestyle magazine shoots into just general. So even if we're doing like a council flat, okay, yeah, yeah, we yeah. will do yeah. like really like lifestyle shots. We'll whip on a 50 millimeter, do a shallow depth of field on like a chimney breast or, you know, and that was unheard of at that time. So when we would do a free trial with a client for years, they're just used to like really good clean photos, yeah, but yeah, just yeah. same photographer going in the corner, boom, yeah, yeah. boom, boom, same sort of shots. Yeah. But then from us, they'll just get on that trial shoot, they'll just get like, really clean like oh, so. you know interior design like photos yeah yeah, yeah. you know so like you had that usp of like different style shots different style shots yeah. um the rapid turnaround and they was yeah. like wow what's this like normally we get our photos back in 10 days this company's getting our photos back the next day so i'll just start going ham um and then i train <laughs> and then i started like actually taking on obviously professional photographers um but one thing that's really good about business, which I'm sure you will get to one day, is like being able to, I've taken on a lot of people within my social circle as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of my friends, shout out to Lucian, who's absolutely smashing it, is just come on board with us a month ago. He was working, funny enough, as a teaching assistant like me for years. But um, like the schooling situation, regardless of the schooling situation now, TA wage is just mad. It's, yeah, it's like, crazy. And it's a hard job, like working with children with special needs and whatever. So he was quite... Yeah. doing that for time and yeah. obviously now i've got made some videos like bro like so can he make month. more money doing that then than with teaching assistant so put it this way he can do he was working like 30 hours a week and with us he can work 10 hours a week and make that that 30 oh, hours money yeah so now obviously he's just loving it and the thing that's yeah. nice about us is like it's like uber in it so that's why photographers like us it's like we don't expect you to take every job mm-hmm like and that's what why people like us is yeah, because yeah, yeah, like yeah. you can be yeah. a photographer still have your own hustle trade yeah. like you like if you're doing this podcast like mm. you just get a job sent to you and then if you want to accept it or not boom oh, you'll go out there and then do the you thing. can even do it like Uber, you know the app and just have like local jobs and stuff so that's the thing that i wanted to get to um so one of the main niches i think that's made us quite successful is i've just invested about 30k into a that software oh I swear yeah yeah, yeah. when's and it coming a, out it's out it's out it's, out, it's yeah. out yeah yeah so what i'll do is i'll send you a screenshot maybe you can throw it yeah, up yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. Yeah. when it cuts in you know when you do your little cuts <laughs> yeah. in there, it's like, they're clean by the way but yeah when Thank you, you yeah. but yeah well, so basically now um 
basically you can go so anywhere you are so basically the traditional way like i've been saying about having in-house photographers and stuff the traditional way for years till this day has been when clients wanted to book in property photo shoots yeah they would email their client hi we've got a yeah x to you know x bed to your free bed here in Walthamstow. Yeah. Um, we need a photographer this time. Please confirm. So that that's always, and that's what it is now. Okay. So the difference that we've got is I've bought in some software where basically clients can now log into a portal, have their own portal. They log in, boom, boom, boom. And then they get given time slots. They can see the days. So, yeah, um, and then they get, yeah. And then they can literally just click on a few buttons. Then they get an email digital. Then they choose the package they want. And obviously it all looks nice and clean with our color coding, choose the package they want. Then they get a confirm confirmation and that goes straight to the workers app. And then they get a digital receipt and then that's just done. So with a few clicks, boom, boom, boom. That's it. And now they can do like, so estate agents, wherever they are, they can just do it. You know and what again, mean? you're adding convenience in it, which exactly. is so valuable today. Like people haven't got time to be chasing and calling up people few clicks and you got your photographer exactly that's yeah, sick bro. yeah 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 and then they got like little things like you know for example if you like on uber eats and then you yeah want, you choose a meal but then they give you the recommend do you want to add on onion rings or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. so if i was like you can add on same day turnaround you can yeah. add on virtual staging so virtual staging is a thing where if you're if say that we're shooting this room mm. like i can turn this whole room into like a like a like a, a, a proper on like on suite is like it? really nice presidential sofas like yes yeah, so we do like a virtual staging thing so we can so if, uh, so if an agent has a vacant property yeah, and yeah. they've got a landlord that wants to sell it yeah but there's no furniture in there yeah to make it look better on portal on their portals right move zoopla okay. etc we can put in digitally enhance and put cgi furniture and stuff and make That's it look sick. to what it could be like so you can like do those little add-ins on on there you send us the link when it's yeah well, it's out now, yeah? yeah yeah we just actually launched like last month and we'll clients, the, the clients are loving it and they're just like yeah, like this is obviously so convenient because estate agents now obviously a lot of working at home and stuff yeah, with yeah, COVID yeah. and not in from the offices. So they can just, you know, they can be out on viewings and just, oh, yeah, yeah. they can meet a landlord like out and about and just be like, oh, okay, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, um, actually we can do 11.30 tomorrow. There's a slot That's available, mad. bam. Rather than going back to the office, email, yeah. wait for us to get back. Then they have to speak to the vendor, make sure that time's okay. It's just slick. Just slick. Clean, I like that, straight, man. straight thing sick. and that that one big thing that i wanted to like come to as well is that was like that was a huge investment out of the profits of the company bro mm. like that's not just like yeah. so, you know that like that technically should be a, like my salary as a director but one thing that's always important when you're starting off is just like it like i i, I don't touch like I, you know what i mean i don't even touch like i don't i just still try and work on my savings yeah and just not so if you are starting a business like especially in the first few years like use all of the profits you've got because it's only going to be an investment for the long run and, yeah, yeah yeah and every like you know i could have just taken 20k out and gone to ibiza and <laughs> yeah. ocean beach done the madness <laughs> miami you know what i mean living it up with rick yeah, russell and that, that sounds but, good <laughs> but i right, from the long run actually yeah i've got this idea let's get some software let's make it more user-friendly you're trying Bang to build an there. empire, innit? Trying to build an empire. Not like a small business. Yeah, man. 100%. Hungry so, for it. All right, I feel like we could talk for hours, innit? <laughs> but it's hard to fit it in the, the hour. No, so of course, of course. I want to get to, so say there's like a budding entrepreneur. He's quite creative like yourself and he, he's interested in photography, whatever. How can he get involved in this business and what could he expect to make if he works hard? Um. So basically, do you mean like if he like wanted to like, like what I've done or if he wanted to, work so is that both maybe yeah so i would say like if you've yeah like i would say l look at what clients and what is out there already in the industry mm, yeah and you know manipulate it's a bit like music like there's a famous quote i remember from jay-z where he's like what's successful and what new artists do is they look at artists out already but manipulate flows and ways and turn it into their own unique thing and then they run with that. So if, you know, if you've got an idea to be the next sick music video director and you're, you're following and you've got some, an inspirational director that you look up to and you love how they're doing their TikToks and how they shoot their videos, what little adjustment could you do to add your uniqueness to that and play on that? 
Do you know what I mean? And um, Bro, that's big because yeah. people feel like they have to invent something new every single time, but you don't. Just see what's working already. Add your little twist on Add it. Add your little sauce, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's exactly what you did. Yeah, yeah. Just came yeah, with yeah. the branding and now the convenience. You're pushing that. And you will be like a million dollar company. Hope so, man. It's very yeah. soon, bro. But yeah, and obviously as well, like, no matter, like, one thing I wanted to say is like, regardless of my ruthless situation with what I experienced is like, and I think we said it a couple of times of like how business can be ruthless. Like honestly, now being a director, by the way, that company, that girl, she's liquidated. Like, oh, she's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, she's done. She hasn't <laughs> even got a website now. Like, I took all of her clients. She probably like, asked you for a job now. I did get that call as well. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a call on private number one day, but I'm just like, nah. <laughs> if anything, I wanted to like take her to the state. Like, nah, I'm not going to get into nah. it. Like pretend like, yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah, just yeah. air it, not turn up or something. <laughs> like meet me here. Like let's do an interview now. Nah. And then I want to ask you, say there's like a young person that's just left university, they want to be an entrepreneur. What, what's the biggest opportunity you see right now? If you were like 22, you just come out of uni, what's the biggest opportunity that you see in the industry? Oh, that's a good one. It's a tricky know. one. That's a tricky one. Um, do you know what? Just on a niche, trying to think out the window, I think the Western's like relationship with the middle east is growing and what i mean by that is like the culture before growing up for me was like you know where would you go on holiday and what would it be like i'd be for me all kind of thing but now it's dubai yeah, yeah and the flip side of that is also you got to remember how much investment from the middle east they're putting in to kind of create a hybrid to partnership partnership with the western i.e the saudi league now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and the amount of money they're like like the, how much did, are they paying for um what did ronaldo get there's been some oh, massive crazy, numbers crazy bro crazy you know, like crazy like m- like mills mills a week and that like madness bro yeah but um but what i'm coming to is like i really do feel like there is like a lot of job opportunities and niches where the middle eastern market whether it'll be like fashion like for example if you think now like i'm like when i say to you fashion powerhouses who do you think Pretty little thing, boohoo. What about more on the premium side? Premium or like LV, Gucci, the Italian designers. Okay, and where where are they all from? Europe, Europe. Western, yeah, 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 Italy. So there's no Middle Eastern one you can think of. That's true. You know things like that, and like this yeah. partnership that's coming. Like, like I'm seeing it, like because there's a lot of interconnection at the moment between the West and the Middle East. And there's so much money that these guys are putting out there. So, and also a lot of people are moving to Dubai. Moving to Dubai. Loads and so if you've got a skill set and you've got some sort of brand or some sort of idea that, you know, might be here and might be, you know, overcapitalized here and really quite rife, maybe they haven't got it in the Middle East and that Big could time. be something that you could push yeah, out yeah. there. So, don't forget, like, you know, the world, the world's a big place. and But even, um, cause I went to Ghana a couple of years back, yeah, and there's so many things that I hit, because there's a lot of money over there. There's so many things here they don't have over there, even things like Uber. There you like go. sophisticated taxi systems that they don't have there that you could easily bring over. Yeah, 100%. Like, it's not all yeah. about UK, London. They ain't like, got Uber in Ghana? No, nah, not really. It's kind of, it's very, like, basic taxi service. Okay. Like, it doesn't really work. Or even, like, Deliveroo, they ain't got over there. Okay. Or that kind of system. Mad. Where you can deliver things instant. Yeah. It's yeah. not over there. But there's loads of money over there. Loads of money. So, and that's what I'm saying. And it could be, and, like, obviously, they're quite, you know, high, like, top of the range the Uber. Yeah, like, these are really yeah. big, yeah, big things. But, you know, you might be really good at nails <laughs> yeah uh you might you know you might be really good at, like within the you might have an idea within clothing you might be um have a really you might be in tech um so you know maybe look at markets and stuff like within the middle east and just mm. like there could be some gaps there that especially like being western yourself use that to your advantage True, yeah. because they do want they really do i feel like they really want to like be you know what i mean the next because because the Western world has always had like the entertainment industry and you know what I mean, been the places to be. Have but you been over to those countries? Well, I went to Dubai. I haven't been to Saudi. I haven't, you know, I haven't been to Dubai. Um, I haven't been to any of them. No, well, it's like tailor made for people from here that have money. Like the whole place is tailor made for it. Yeah. So they're really investing heavily in Western, not culture, but Western things to make people feel welcome from this side of the world. 
So I completely agree, man. Yeah. Huge opportunity. Huge opportunity. So yeah, so so in conclusion, yeah, maybe look at, you know, like things overseas in the Middle East and like um yeah, yeah, man. Um but in terms of like on a smaller scale, like what like if you're just, you know, got a bit of saving and you've got like your brand or you've got something that you something niche that you might have and unique and you want to push mm, that's a hard one yeah just off the top um what can i feel like or say i gave you a thousand pounds and you had to start again where would you go with it um what something completely different anything yeah anything yeah. um so in honesty for me and i'm coming back to the dubai thing i've actually got like something pending at the moment with a fashion line Oh wow! You we, can't talk about it. I can talk about it um, because I'm not giving away some like you know uh, <laughs> illustrations or anything. Or I'm not going to say too much, but it's quite a big thing. Oh wow! Um, a lot of my like profits. Um, to be honest, the reason I created Mason is for this. Is it? So I can use what I'm making from that to push into that. Yeah. Oh man! So it's a fashion line based in. The so basically, it it's a hybrid Western and Middle Eastern contemporary high end fashion line. What's it called? Um. So I'm f still thinking of that name, but I'm even my name maybe like because yeah. obviously you got Alexander McQueen. Or your surname. So look, Leo Cardio Miranda. Done. That's quite, it, man. Quite, quite a unique zesty name. You know it's what sound I mean? designer it's, it's to got me. A bit, it's got it's a bit different. <laughs> so I may as well play on it, in it. But yeah, but I, I, what what I really like and what I've really been always like I've I'm, I love geometric shit patterns and okay. and that sort of yeah. and obviously that's a big big like um part of you know um the arts culture within the middle east yeah, um yeah, yeah, yeah. and my idea is sort of playing on that with high-end contemporary fashion and of course like you see for example now um um who is it dior like all their patterns that they've got on bags and that whole pattern style just went people went crazy for that to the point of where lv and others started adopting yeah, that yeah, um yeah, yeah, i think yeah. christian dior as well they do a lot yeah. of pattern style based and but yeah, it'd be nice to have like, um, like coming back to when I was saying about, you know, you don't think it's weird that we have, there's not, a, like obviously Dubai has got a huge fashion industry, huge, like, which they know of, mm, it's not but it's, there's no like powerhouses like LV yeah, yeah, yeah. thing that you can think of, like a hybrid between That's the Middle East and thing. And like yeah. I said, the culture thing as well, like people wanting to go now, it's Dubai. Yeah. So there's, there is a partnership behind like people, like. And of course, I'm thinking of a couple of sheiks or I start seeing what, like, you know, if I, when I do launch, because basically I'm doing it properly. Like, as okay. you can see with my company, I like, I'm yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I don't want to just build a clothing brand where I just get something and then just put it out there. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, go get yeah. every item on Smash Bro. I'm going to create a serious lookbook. Wow. Um, hire some real professional, like, models. I'm looking uh, forward to seeing that, man. Look, going out, shooting in some sick locations, like sick. really top on high end, high end feel to it through the through the branding of it, and then creating a lookbook. Um, I've, I'm actually in talks with a connection from London Fashion Week as well. Is it? Which yeah, so I'm hoping. Obviously, once I prove to them and I can put it in their faces, it's all you know. It can be all talk and saying this, but putting it in their faces with samples and prototypes and then actually having models and a lookbook yeah. is a whole different game where they were like, oh, okay, this is serious. So I'm getting to that stage, but yeah, I'm, um, yeah, that, that's, 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 that, that's something I Sick, feel man. is a little gap and, um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get into. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, man. Maybe we we'll do another episode in a year or so once you launched it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Um, just so in terms of context, what's been like the biggest wins, the biggest clients you've secured so far and what's, how much are you making? What's been your best month? Okay, so um, I would say by far, obviously I can't really name all my clients. Yeah, of course. Because as you know, yeah. I'm competing with like 240 companies as well. <laughs> so they'll just come and nab, try and nab them. They won't nab them, but they'll, they'll try. try to come for them <laughs> in it. I can't like, um, in fact, like coming to say that, um, just going off on a tangent, which I did want to say before is I've, one of my competitors I've actually taken into administration. And I imagine they're based in Mayfair, bro. And what do you mean you taken into administration? So we've taken all of their clients because of our product. And mm -hmm. this is a company that's been operating for over 20, 30 wow. years. They're called Spec. Okay. And they were like the McDonald's of the property photography wow. industry. They've been running for 30 so years. So you took all their business? We've taken all their business to the point of where I've had clients call me and say, Leo, what are you doing? And we've, imagine I've just got one of those um, shipping container offices yeah. Yeah. sites just in Town. Yeah. And I'm competing with million, with Donnie's and that base. Do it, like man. on Mayfair, yeah, and I've wiped them out, bro. 
Wow. So just to give you in context, so um, coming to back, so yeah, so coming back to saying Clyde like is a ruthless, ruthless industry in that way. Like, if, you know, I have to be careful of what I say because people are watching what we're doing right yeah, now and with me as a company. So, of course. but one one company I can say because they're just massive anyways, like we've recently taken on Berkeley Homes. Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Berkeley, everyone knows their logo, yeah, they're massive. They're just massive property developers. So, um, and what's interesting about them is like, we've done it really naturally. So it wasn't a fact of like, I've basically taken on a site of theirs in Oval, just that when we started working with them to now seven months down the line and I've got over 15 sites. When you say site, do you mean like um, a block? So each, so within Berkeley, yeah. um, if you manage, ma imagine it like a family tree, they yeah. all have their subdivisions. So yeah. one of their subdivisions will be sales and lettings for Oval site. And that's almost like a franchise. But they might not coordinate with another Berkeley site that's all the way in um, Tooting okay. of a new development. Yeah. So even though we're doing all of that stuff and we're with them, it doesn't mean that Tooting knows about us. So what's happened is naturally I've got on this oval site about six months ago and then they then, like, and I could have easily just been on like a crazy, like, do you know what? I've got them. I could just hit up. Do you know what I mean? The other the other side, like the other com subdivisions of Berkeley, because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. so big, yeah. to be like, look, we're already working with one of your sites, you know, one of your, com you know, branches, um, you know, it only makes sense to use us as like, why don't you give us a go as well? Like if your own company are using us, like why don't you, you know, you use us as well? Because um, it's like franchises basically. Yeah. But I didn't do that. I did, I, and I've never actually done that with business. I just let it naturally run. So yeah, it got yeah, to the yeah. point where we became so good and they became so happy with our rhythm and our product that over like for two months down the line they would then send an email to that thing like look like we're working with these guys their photos are phenomenal Your reputation they're, they're is growing great. and then and then boom one yeah. morning or one afternoon i'll just get an email oh hi i'm da -da -da from but that's the it. thing i feel like if you do a good service you don't even need to advertise yourself because the word of mouth will spread people want the best yeah and if you're giving the best service your name is going to spread I haven't spent um, one penny on marketing. That's mad. You just delivered the best service. Yeah, I haven't spent. Well, I haven't That's done any crazy. marketing. So it's it's a bit scary in one way, in a good way to think yeah, yeah, what yeah. what can happen now. Obviously, with our software that we're launching, yeah, and now yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Are you doing podcasts? Yeah. Getting out there. We're on our second phase, if you like. That's sick. You know, the foundations are built. I've got my team. Now it's the second phase. Me coming on here, sick, making man. people aware of what we're doing wiping out companies in Mayfair and that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, yeah. So now it's scary to think, oh, actually, if I start putting some money into marketing, yeah, uh, what are we going to do? If we're, like, So coming back to our best month, I think our best month was obviously summers within the period of property, the property industry is a very, like, our peak time um, because, you know, parents at home with kids, kids are off school, so yeah, it's more yeah. convenient for the an, an household, family household to move in them times. Um, so summers are our, our busiest period. And um, I think our highest was like, again, obviously being a company that's been o o operating for two years, it's not compared to some big companies out there. It's not crazy, but it's still good. Like, I think it was probably 40, 40 we done like 40 a month. 40K? Yeah, yeah. Flip, man. 40, yeah, yeah. So that was and is our it biggest. profitable? Is it like um you keep a lot of that, or is it? Uh, it you're going back the out. The best, the best way is like this. I'm I'm free is the magic number in it, so yeah, I'll leave yeah, it yeah. as that. So oh, you, sick, you, you, you you approximately divide that by yeah yeah three or even half depending on that's good. Yeah, so you divide that by three, and then that's my profits, and obviously the other yeah yeah yeah. It's like um the food industry, and it? it's like um all all meals that you get, it's there's it broken down into three right so one one segment of it is the restaurant making money back to pay the workers yeah. then the other segment is to pay for, you know pay for the bills and and the food then the other segment is profit yeah 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 so it's, that's sick man yeah, i love yeah, it yeah, yeah. so just for the audience now i'm a young entrepreneur i want like a side hustle does it make sense for me to come and work with yourself whilst i build my like what can i make if basically if i partnered with you as you one of your photographers and how does that look like? So um we've actually got like a partnership coming up um with Canon where we're doing like um um an apprenticeship scheme training program 
where photographers, any young photographers, young and old, um, want to sort of, you know, come on board with us, train for a few months, um, learn the tricks of the trade. And then once you've got the skill set and you feel like you're happy to do it, you can, yeah, work full time for us. And and the partnership with Canon comes in because, of course, Canon, um, you know, it they can provide these students because they've got so many, you know, contacts yeah, yeah, with yeah, universities yeah. Yeah. and partnerships with them. And of course, on the media side for Canon, you know, it looks good. Like if you, yeah. you know, people, you know, if you you, you can show your customers and being that you're not only one of the best developing camera making companies in the world, but also you're providing work for young people in this current stage. That's sick. If they can partner with companies that can enable them to do that. Wow. So and how much could they make once they've become ready to for a full position? Like, um, so to start inside, so it's, again, it's a bit like Uber in it. It depends on depends how many, how many shoots you want to do and how hungry you are. So yeah. just to give you on context, like my head photographers, like my senior photographers now probably do about, yeah, they do about 4k a month. That's good, man. And then, my some photographers are just happy just doing jobs that here and now. Monday, yeah, that that's yeah. their their own like you know what I mean that's they're on yeah. it like. Yeah. But um, but then we have photographers that you know are just happy to do a couple of days a week and you know that can vary from one hundred and fifty to two hundred pound a day. Just you work when you like. Basically, sick, man. yeah, so it's a good thing to do to build yourself up and get some experience. Yeah, yeah, that's man. sick, man. Um, yeah, I think like that was a sick episode. Thank you, brother. Where can people find you and what's like, you got any services that you can offer or um, so mentorship? Yeah, so definitely um, hit up our website, um, which obviously I'm sure you'll splash up on the screen. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, um, we've got like a, you know, contact tab on there. So, okay. you know, um, and we're always, always like, we've got a constant role in on Indeed application. Um process situation on on indeed so and that's yeah, just yeah. constant so yeah. if you, even if you go on indeed now yeah like you'll see that we're constantly just there so if, if you know if you if you've got a few years experience with um property photography and to be honest if you if you haven't you know again we're happy to train you um and 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 take you on sick man um but yeah man perfect reach out there i love it all right my bro. thanks guys that was a sick episode went super quick as usual um but yeah if you're a budding photographer or creative and you want to get some experience and you're even like a side hustle reach out to leo he's doing massive things looking forward to seeing where he'll be in the next year actually um yeah so make sure you check out the youtube on the venture room instagram the venture room and tiktok and we'll see you on the next episode <laughs>